So when it talks about heaven, it says, and its doors will be opened. When it talks about hell, it just says, its door will be opened. So there's no use of the word, and. Which you think, no big deal. There's no real difference between this and that. This makes a world of a difference. A world of a difference. This wow in Arabic, wa futihata wabuha, is also called wa haliya. The wow that means something is happening while something else is happening. I say to you, when I came to your door, you opened it. Think about this. When I came to your door, you opened it. Was the door already open? No. no. Until I came to your door, it was closed. And only upon my arrival, it was open. But if I say, I came to your door and it was open. So if you say, and, and you had, if I say, I came to your door and you had opened it. It might even suggest that it was what? Already open. The wow haliya actually suggests they came to the doors of Jannah while it was already left open. But when people arrive to the doors of Jahannam, until they arrive there, the doors are what? Closed. The doors of Jannah are actually already open. The doors of Jahannam are what? Closed. Are there people who die shaheed or die as children or die in an earthquake and they go straight to Jannah? Yes. How are you going to go to Jannah if the doors are closed? Mm -hmm. Nobody goes straight to Jahannam. Mm -hmm. But people go straight to what? Jannah. Jannah. And how does Allah explain this powerful concept just by putting an and? <laughs> and imagine Allah kept the doors of Jahannam open or closed suggesting that He does not want people to go there. And the only time those gates were forced open is finally when the people who deserve it show up at its gate. It is only at that time, subhanAllah. This is the kind of thing that's lost in translation. Because you know, when you first read it, you're like, just and, what's the big deal? You know? But there's this like treasure of wisdom buried inside this little small, this little harf, this well, you know? These are the kinds of things that are it's such an important thing to highlight, to bring to light like how remarkable this book is, how incredibly beautiful every single ayah is in its place. And it's really, it's an exploration. It's, it's such a fun exploration because you know, you're, you're going down, diving down deep looking for you know, treasures yeah, yeah. and you find something every time. And you know, everybody thinks their pearl, that's the best one and there's no more down there. The problem is though, this is an endless ocean and every time you dive in, you will come out with what? You'll come out with pearls. If you take the right approach, you take the right navigation, which means you have the right intention, you'll always come out with pearls. And you know what? Every time you come out with a pearl, it'll make you realize there's an endless amount still left. The encouragement I want to give you guys is get started with the Arabic language. Don't worry about finishing. Worry about starting. It's, it's, the destination is not the problem. I told you in a previous halaqa, our goal in life is not destinations. What is it? The path, the journey. My Arabic students, like, how am I going to memorize all this vocabulary? There's so many rules. There's so much this. There's so many notes. How do I remember all this information? Oh, and I'm like, wait, wait hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're too stressed about the destination. You need to learn to enjoy the journey. Even if you learn this little, enjoy it. You know, in Malaysia, I find that in our culture, um, we are taught to, 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 to actually um, read the Qur'an and do the katam of the Qur'an from cover to cover before we actually dive into Arabic, uh, learning the Arabic language mm -hmm. um, or the tafsir and the understanding. So, um, is it better to go straight for the Arabic first or should we do the katam? Because right now, like my Ustazah is telling me in my class that, okay, now I want you to read from cover to cover. So I'm like, okay. I actually like that idea. Okay. I like that idea. You know why? Because it'll give you flow in reading. Mm -hmm. So there's this theory in education that if you read well, mm -hmm. then you'll be good at, if you read English well, for example, then you'll be good at history, you'll be good in English class, you'll be doing good in science class, you'll be good in, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, global studies class. All those classes you'll be good at. You know why? Because now you're good at what? Reading. You have a flow in reading. If you're, if, you're, if you're hesitating at the syllables, if you're not pronouncing it smoothly, if you're not enjoying the reading itself, yeah. then other aspects of learning are going to be hampered. 
So you think of it like this, uh, your flow in reading and finishing a khatam of the Qur'an, that's like it's mechanical, okay? That's, it's a motor skill, it's like you're building a muscle. Studying Arabic is more a cognitive uh, uh, thing, it's like, it's like learning math, yeah. right? It's not, it's, you have to learn formulas, and you have to apply them and, you know? But you're not going to be good at the cognitive if you're not good at the motor. So I would focus on the motor and I would actually even get in the habit, okay, now you enjoy reciting, you have a good flow in reciting, and you've even now developed a habit of memorizing a little bit. A little bit means an, if it takes you an ayah a day, an ayah in a week, it doesn't matter. But you're in some kind of memorization mode and then you start learning Arabic. You know what happens? Here's the beautiful thing that happens. The beautiful thing that happens is, let's say you learned one word in Arabic. You learned the word huwa. You know a bunch of surahs, you're reciting them to yourself, and a huwa pops up and slaps you in the face. Qul huwa Allah Wait, I know that word. Now there's a word of the Qur'an that lives inside your heart that you know. Not just on the paper. Now it's inside you. Right? And now you're able to connect with something you have inside you. So developing a flow in reading and even getting in the habit of memorizing a little bit, even before you know the Arabic, is not a bad thing. And I don't say that this is linear, like you have to first do the Arabic, then you learn to read, then you memorize Qur'an. No, 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 not like that. Whatever you have access to do, you do. The, the challenge is don't overdo it. And the other challenge is don't do all of these things at the same time because you cannot focus like that. Take one skill, like if you're working on your reading, forget about Arabic. Yeah. Just work on your reading, that's it, focus. Mm -hmm. Get somewhere with it. Because you know what happens for a lot of students? Well, I want to learn to read too, and I want to learn Arabic too, and I want to learn to see too, and I want to learn this too. You know what you end up learning? Nothing. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. Take one skill, work on it. You are the slave, this is the book of the master. You have to act like a slave. You have to have the right attitude. And when you have that attitude, it will give you much things.